What's the word, y'all? I feel like it's been a minute since we've done one of these, like, reactionary videos to a Bleach Report article. Um, and, and this one was very intriguing to me. Every NBA team's most underrated player. If you see articles like this, shoot them to me if you want to see me react. I'm Dan Favell. Let's see what you got. Most underrated. I thought this was interesting because there are some teams out there that I would consider um, don't have any underrated players. Which means I just think the world has their eyes open to the talent on the roster. And some teams have multiple underrated players. So I'm, I'm curious to what F uh, Dan Favell thinks on every NBA organization. Start it off. Atlanta Hawks. I was going to say there's probably multiple players on the Atlanta Hawks, but I think the people whose eyes are now open to the Atlanta Hawks since the conference finals run. But if I had to take a guess, it's probably DeAndre Hunter. And it is DeAndre Hunter. Elite level defense. Offense is still coming around. It's still good offensively. Makes a lot of sense. This dude can guard so many different positions. Have had a pretty good outings guarding star players in his short NBA career so far. Um, just elite level defensive player. So, um, solid. Who's next? I don't even know. Alphabetical order? I struggle with that. Let's just take a look. The Boston Celtics, Peyton Pritchard. I mean, I, I guess he did drop 91 in a Pro-Am game and then flew back to Vegas and got clamped up by Davion Mitchell. What, whatever, whatever. The Boston Celtics, though, are one of those organizations where I don't consider them having an underrated player. Maybe it is Robert Williams because he signed an extension that looked like it might be a steal in two to three years. Um, actually, I would probably put Robert Williams here more than Peyton Pritchard, but maybe Peyton Pritchard's going to surprise me a little bit more um, in his in his next year campaign. I don't know. Next team is, I, I'm not going to, Brooklyn has Nicholas Claxton. Okay. All right. Now, you know, I'm, I'm not always right when it comes to draft. Honestly, I'm probably shooting 20% when it comes to the NBA draft. But Nicholas Claxton was one of my favorite players in his draft class. So to see him get some, some buzz and some recognition is really solid. Like I said, I shoot like 20%. You can count all the misses. But I'm, I'm going to tell you about my hits. And this Nicholas Claxton was one of them. I think uh, Bruce Brown could have been here um, as well. But I think a lot of people realize how solid Bruce Brown could be other than the missed layup. Um, but Nicholas Claxton is so solid. Um, as a center, his ability to switch onto guards and kind of hold his own is very, very underrated. And he might be a very key part to an already super stacked Brooklyn Next team this season. Next team. I, I don't know alphabetical. Terry Rozier. All right, Terry Rozier got paid. Four years, $97 million is the exact number. Um, maybe it's time I plain the Terry Rozier's widely unappreciated bandwagon. He thought to himself ready to move on to. Okay. Um, but yeah. I mean, when, when he originally signed to Charlotte, a lot of people were like, oh, I mean, he was good as a backup. He was good in those that conference finals run, but he ain't really done that much else. And he had one, like, not-so-great year in Charlotte, but last year he was he was amazing for them. Um, so amazing that they were like, Devontae Graham, we'd rather lose you and restrict the free agency because we know Terry Rozier and LaMelo Ball fit a little bit better. I like the, the arc of Terry Rozier, and I like the tattoo in the back of his head. The Chicago Bulls, thank you. Stop it. Okay, all right. I've, I've went on this tangent even before DeMar DeRozan was a bull. Every single year, Bleacher Report, ESPN, Sports Illustrated, all these places have these publications ranking the top 100 players in the league. It happens every year. And DeMar DeRozan be so, so low on these things. And now I got to defend him even more now he's a bull. I still believe DeMar DeRozan might be under under um appreciated underrated he might be still slightly overpaid but i think two things can exist you know in his kick game his fit game i'm excited to see what he brings to league fit somebody got the union joints on? okay 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 i agree with that one Collins. oh that's two for two mr dan you killing the game right now because though Colin Sexton averaged 20 something, 24 or whatever, I still believe that a lot of people have pigeonholed him. And, I, and people that I know, like people on my podcast have done this too, have already pigeonholed him as like, oh, he's going to be elite level six man. But I think he could probably be more than that. You know, I think he is an underrated player in the in the old, whole eco sphere of the NBA. Is that the right word? I don't really know. Um, I, I do agree with this. Um, I agree with this. Um, he also said Larry Nance is a good, good candidate. I, I oh. Larry Nance is an amazing candidate for an article like this, for sure. But Colin Sexton, I like as well. Um, okay, Reggie Bullock, I can see that. I just don't know who else would be a candidate on the Dallas Mavericks. Dallas Mavericks fans are probably know better than me because y'all watched all 80-plus, or I guess 70-something games last year. Um, but I do think that Reggie Bullock is, a, is an amazing shooter and a really good pickup for the Dallas Mavericks. Jermichael Green. Very interesting. Jermichael Green... Um, Signed in it. He opted out of his last year of like a player option and reorchestrated his deal. Um, they really like him in Denver. I don't know who else will be on this list for them. So maybe Jermichael Graydon is the guy. Um, and I, I mean, I don't be reading these articles. He he makes a point here about some statistics. I'm not going into that. 
Is Killian Hayes underrated? Hmm. I don't know. Um, he did have that period of time, I think late in the season when he came back from his injury or whatever, where he was averaging like nine points and like seven assists or something, which is solid in comparison to what he was averaging for the first half of the season. Um, but I wasn't super impressed with his summer league play. I don't know. Um, under, I, I don't know. Who else could be here for the Detroit Pistons? Who knows? Um, can Killian Hayes have a good sophomore season? I hope he does for the sake of the Detroit Pistons fans because they got a lot of young players on their roster. I would hate for him to get buried. Um, but what type of coach is Dwayne Casey? Is Dwayne Casey going to throw him out there even if he's bad? We'll find out. Um, we want to Scott Anderson. We saw him in the in the cover picture with Kyle Anderson, so we kind of expected this one. I love the story of Wanty. I don't need to talk about it. Wanty is a ho is a hooper. Um, he's gonna play a big part in this upcoming season with Klay Thompson eventually being back and yada yada. David Nwaba. This was one of the surprising things. David Nwaba got an extension, and not that he didn't deserve it. I just thought that the Houston Rockets was going like super youth movement, but instead they extended a guy that's not youthful. But it's maybe it's just because he is such a solid overall player that you can't just have a bunch of 23-year-olds in a locker room. So David Nwaba, ex-bull. Um, I like David Nwaba's game a lot, a lot. Um, TJ Warren. Hey, man, not a lot of TJ Warren buzz since the bubble, man. I know he dealt with some injuries and stuff like that. Is he the most underrated player? I think if I had to take a guess at my pick for the most underrated player on the Pacers, I think they have a roster of underrated players low-key. Um, I would pick Miles Turner because I feel like he continues to get snubbed from conversations for defensive teams, yada, 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 yada. Um, next team, Nicholas Batum. Sure, Nicholas Batum was ass for a long time and maybe a couple seasons. He signed that big old contract and just didn't do anything. And now he has reworked himself as a guy that's going to be getting minimum slash $5 million a year deals. And his production on those type of contracts is amazing. Um, but yeah, they, they paid him heavily before he got to the Clippers. Um, Malik Monk. Yes, I agree. Um, I think Malik Monk had an underrated season. He was struggling to find minutes. You know, he dealt with some off-court stuff that I think is behind him, which is a great thing. Um, and I think he's going to surprise a lot of Lakers fans or NBA fans because more people are going to get eyes on him versus, like, when he was in Charlotte, how many national television games did he play in in his short NBA career? A handful. And now he's in L.A. and, like, half of their half of their games are on national TV. So Malik Monk, very underrated at this point, but I think people will understand. Um, it's just whether or not that three-point shooter from last year is real or he might regress to not being a great three-point shooter. We'll see. Cal Anderson, 100%. The man went from a dude that um, – couldn't score or didn't score the ball at all. So I think he averaged like 12, 13 points per last season or something like that. He turned into a good shooter, mid-range and three, three-pointer. Hal Anderson, really, really solid pickup. Um, and I know some people that were Spurs fans that hated to see him go, and he's blossoming now um, with the Memphis Grizzlies. And I didn't even realize that he had a little, a little tattoo piece that I can't really tell what that is. Shout out to Cal Anderson. Kyle Lowry. Interesting. Um, interesting. And you know why? I'm not even going to read the article. The reason why I'm going to guess he has him here is I think a lot of people jumped off the Cal Lowry bandwagon or the Cal Lowry train after last season. Um, and I still believe that Cal Lowry is really solid. It ain't much in this game that you'd be like, oh, he's going to, he's going to age terribly. That's, I don't feel that way with a guy like Cal Lowry. So I can understand him being here. Um, maybe Victor Lidipo is a candidate too, but maybe not because he was so, so bad. Um, Dante DiVincenzo, sure, I can see that. He he didn't play during the finals run, so I can see people looking at him and being like, ah, is he really that guy? He's solid. Um, he's solid. Very similar to, like, OG Ananobi during the Toronto Raptors run where he couldn't play, but, like, they're super excited to have him back for next year and their potential to repeat. Um, Jaden McDaniels, I love this pick. I love this pick. for. We already talked about the Minnesota Timberwolves, and in that whole video, I didn't even mention the name Jaden McDaniels, and I felt so bad. I just didn't find a way to talk about it. Um, but Jaden McDaniels, defensively, he is the prototypical guy you want at the four position next to a guy like Anthony Towns. I want him to get bulkier, and of course, he's only, what, 21, 22 years old, maybe. Um, and through time, he will put on some of that muscle, but he's just really, really solid, bro. Really, really solid. Um, yeah, Jaden McDaniels is a really solid guy. Dante of uh, Devonte Graham. I I can agree with this too because the year he jumped onto the map, he was an elite level shooter, and then he had to redo his game because now Terry Rozier is really solid, and now Lamelo Ball is on the team, and now I don't really know when my yada yadas are coming. So I think Pelicans like their overall contract to him, like the value of his contract is really solid. They just really really hoping that they get two years ago Vontae and not last year's Vontae, because I mean there there could be an argument like oh the league figured out what he could and couldn't do and they started to play him that way. I think he shot thirty seven percent from the field and 37 percent from three which means that if it ain't a three-point shot he ain't hitting it you know what i'm saying and that's not not the greatest but it's potential there's potential there 
Um, New Orleans Noel. I can agree. New Orleans Noel is one of those dudes. Um, I was happy that he got an extension. Some people are upset with the length of the, the extension or the, the dollar amount on the extension. I ain't really worried about that. Darius Baisley. I want a big, big year for Darius Baisley, honestly, man. I want a big, big year for him. I think his story, I, you know, y'all know I like stories. I like narratives. I like story. I, I like his story of skipping college. I'm going to do this internship at New Balance. I'm going to sign a New Balance. I'm going to get my own signature shoe. Well, my own, I guess it's not really a signature shoe. My own type of shoe. And I'm going to forego college and still be a hooper in the NBA and be good. And so far, he's definitely showed a lot, a lot of flashes of what he could be. But he hasn't really put it together for a 10-game span, a 20-game span. And because of that, that's why I'm kind of a little iffy about Darius Baisley. But I hope he has a successful year number three. What's it be year number, year number three? Um, Jalen So, Oh, rookie. We throw a rookie maybe because he fell to five. I don't know. Rookies on the list? Jalen Sugg's amazing. Um... Is, is that something to say about the Orlando Magic team as a whole? Um, if you feel the need to make a case for Terrence Ross, Gary Harris, or Robert Lopez's hook shot, please have it. Honorable mention is James Ennis, who should have signed immediately. But Orlando, okay, uh, Danny Green. Don't need to tell you why Danny Green is is pretty solid. Um, I know a lot of people rag on Danny Green because when you need him the most, sometimes he ain't there when it comes to his three-point shooting. But I ain't going to forget about the year where he was damn near finals MVP for the Spurs. I ain't forgot about that series. Um, Cam Johnson. I think we can all agree during that finals where Cam Johnson um, showed his ass and he was playing really solidly. Robert Covington. I know me and Ro Roko got this thing here. Um, and what, whatever. Me and Roko got this thing. But everybody knows that Roko, really, really solid player overall. Okay. 26 is Rashawn Holmes. Don't make no argument against that. Rashawn Holmes is up there. I just don't know what's going on with the Kings. We already talked about that, though. 27 is Doug McDermott. With the Spurs. I was curious about the contract that they gave him. Not that it was a bad deal. Not that it was a long deal. Um, but it felt like they was going more youth movement. And I think, what is he, 29 years old at this point? Which is still relatively young. And like I guess, like I said earlier, you can't just have a bunch of 23-year-olds in the locker room. He turns 30 in January, so I was right on 29. Um, Chris Boucher. I need Chris Boucher to stay out of foul trouble. If that boy can stay out of foul trouble, he going to be good. <laughs> That's the big thing. Just stay out of foul trouble, Chris. Stay out of foul trouble. We going to be solid. Um, Royce O'Neal, yep, 6'4", power forward that can defend all f four to five, four positions. Let's give him four because if you're 6'4", you're not. <sighs> Among 400-plus players who logged at least 300 minutes last season, here's a list of everyone who spent the largest share of the defensive possessions guarding the number one option than Royce O'Neal. It's nobody. He guarded the number one option every single day. You love to see that, Royce. Great, great story. Another one of those guys. And then Contavious Caldwell Pope. I can agree with this. KCP should be starting at the three. I know he's an undersized three, but KCP is really solid, man. That's pretty good. What about the... Can I see comments? I think you can see comments on these things. I wonder if somebody's going to make an argument. Oh. All right. I guess I... Guess I can't. All right. Bye.